we retrace the journeys of several writers who feature Port of Spain in their work. Step into the enthralling worlds they've created. Create a literary mashup, mixing stories with a sense of place to make literature come alive. We begin at the Red House, seat of the Parliament of Trinidad and Tobago. All right, welcome back to the No Morning Show. I am Natalie Lagore, and of course, it's that time of the year where we celebrate the literary festival. It's the Bocas Lit Fest, of course, the 23rd to the 25th of April, and we do have director and founder Marina Salandi Brown and uh, Marie Coffey, who is educator and storyteller, to talk to us about the excellent lineup for this year's Bocas Lit Fest. Bocas Lit Zest. According to Carrie. Good morning to you, ladies. Good morning. How are you all doing? Good. Lovely to see you. Nice ah, yes, you. yes. So, Bocas Lit Zest, that's what everybody is calling it because they think that it is, uh, Mrs. Salandi Brown, I don't know if you know the local palace, they think that it turn up, <laughs> which means that it's going really good. So, tell us some of the offerings for this year and what the theme is for this year's Bocas Lit Fest. Okay, Natalie, please call me Marina. <laughs> okay, Marina. Actually, the festival is called the NGC Book Asset Fest, and the organization is called the Book Asset Fest. Slightly confusing, but the festival, whenever it's got NGC in front of it, it's the actual festival time. And, um, you know, we were hit by COVID, obviously, and we had to go virtual last year. We had two virtual festivals. So we're hoping that our virtual festival this year is going to be even better than the the virtual festival we had last September. And um, we've got 20 events. We've got about 100 people participating. It starts on Friday um, late afternoon and continues until Sunday evening, which is the 23rd, 25th, back to back. We've got a program that's got hourly events, but in between, I've commissioned um, new work. Italian Agostini has written some um, um, comedy sketches and lots of other things happening in between. So um, it's, it's full. It's absolutely full. And we've been working hard, so I know it's full. Right. Well, I'm definitely happy to hear that. So, Mary, you're, you're one of the storytellers. Talk to us about that and talk to us about your literary work. Okay. Um, thank you for having me. Um, my work actually is a drama presentation, which is called Lola and the Battle of the Box. Children will be introduced to stick fighting in a fun and enjoyable way. Um, it took me a lot of time actually thinking about what I would like to do and how I would like to present it. Um, getting the children involved in our local culture and helping them to understand different parts of our local culture. So what they would have missed. Of course, they are going to get a little taste of it using um, characters that they were familiar with from my storyline, which is Lola. So Lola is in there with other characters to show the children all about the stick fighting. Actually, it's an introduction to stick fighting. Right. Well, I'm definitely happy to hear that, that it's not just the fiction work, but that it can really, you know, get them to learn about the culture of Trinidad and Tobago, especially stick fighting. That has to be an exciting one. But uh, Marina, as about to say, Mrs. Salandi Brown, Marina, you said 100 people, over 100 participants in Bocas Lit Fest, NGC's Bocas, Bocas Lit Fest uh, this year. Talk to us about some of the different elements that we'll be able to enjoy this year. I know that there will be storytelling, there will be extempo. What else? Well, actually, I'm glad to, to go back to what Mary was saying, because children for us are really, really important. And you know what our work involves you know, is not just the festival. Um, it's really about building readers for the future. And from the very beginning, children have been at the heart of that and the base of that. And Mary's been working with us um, over a few years, like many of the storytellers over the last 11 years. Um, this is the 11th year of the festival. Um, in trying to get children to write, etc. So Mary's been involved in storytelling, and this year she's doing Lola. And, is it? I forget the name. Um, Lola. But love the books. <laughs> yes, and um, this is doing a bit of drama, which is something that we've done um, outside of the festival before for children. But um, children have slots on the Saturday morning and on the Sunday morning, and then of course we have the evening. So we've got the morning and we've got the evening. And the evening 
we call it the evening rap, really, where we have um, some new music that has been composed to go along with a biography that we, um, we're going to be sh um, premiering, really, um, about Shea Keen, the jazz musician, very, very well known and admired internationally, but little known at home. And we've got a new biography about him, so there's going to be some lovely music on the Friday night. And then on the Saturday, we've got the thing that many, many writers are waiting for, and that is the announcement of all the prize winners uh, for the various prizes that we run. And then, interesting, on the Sunday evening, we, um, we have something called the 100 Books That Made Us. Mm -hmm. And this was, in, this was in response to the BBC having running something called the 100 Books in, English, in the English Language, and hardly included any Caribbean books. So we decided, well, you know what, we think we've got some very good books. So let's find out. So we did some crowdsourcing. And um, from people from all over the region said, you know, they sent in the books that we thought were really important to us, to our, our culture. And we're going to be revealing what those books are on the, on the Sunday evening. So that's a big thing for us. And of course, the other thing that you did is that before you introduced Mary and I and me, you, in, you ran a trailer for a film called Port of Spain, The Writer's Heaven. We've never, we've never done a film before, but this is one of the effects of having done, I mean, having been forced onto the virtual platform. That one of the things we wanted to do last year for our 10th anniversary was to have a literary walking tour, which is something we've been talking about for ages and had never really done. And of course we couldn't actually physically do it. So it morphed into a film and it's really a beautiful film. I've had the privilege of seeing it, um, of course. And, um, I recommend everybody to see that. That's actually on the Saturday, on during during Saturday's programming. And there's lots. I mean, before we came on, you were you were having fun with the boys in the off in, in the studio about family and all of that. All of that is totally central um, in some of the story, in some of the things we're going to be discussing with books. There are lots of books about family and history and all the new things that go on, you know, within our societies, etc. So there's a lot, really, quite a lot. Yeah. And I'm very, very particularly grateful for the 100 books that made us because, you know, as a Caribbean girl, I do read a lot of books from Caribbean authors. I can just, Anthony Winkler just comes to mind or even Trevor Roan. I mean, we have so many books and so many, or lovelace, of course, there are lots and lots and lots of them. That's the thing. So I'm definitely excited to see the 100 books that made us to see who made the top 100. But you said that there was some crowdsourcing how did that work to, to select the 100 books well the good thing about it of course is that people think about the caribbean as just english speaking where we do and the french of course think it's only french speaking and of course there's dutch and there's spanish so interestingly there are books that that are from other language groups in the 100 books and i think that's lovely because we really should think about this as not just you know, in, belonging to the Western groups. But you know, Natalie, the other thing, of course, you're being a little bit shy about is that you're actually going to be taking part of the festival um, in the, the, big, the big idea, which is one of our highlight events on the Sunday morning, in which we have three very important young people in doing important jobs um, around the world who are going to be taking part um, in in um, well not taking part but setting off the tone for discussion about the way ahead for our region after covid well you know we live in very troubled times and in a very vulnerable region so um we're going to be talking to a global economist um we're going to be talking to a very important international um, environmental scientist and to the one of the, uh, the man running one of the biggest conglomerates in the region. Um, hopefully our Prime Minister, who unfortunately is not well and is supposed to be taking part, may feel that he could join in again later on. But um, we've got Professor Agard, Dr. Justin Ram, and we've got um, Anthony N. the uh, III taking part in that. And of course, you'll be hosting that. Yes. And that is usually one of the events, the big idea events, that garners a lot of, um, of response. And of course, the children do too. So um, we, we're looking forward to that. So the extempo, the big idea, the storytelling and reading the film. So definitely a packed two to three days of the Bocas, the NGC Bocas Lit Fest. 
Yes, and I might just add that in the children, we've actually got, um, what we did is that we had a children's caravan that went around the country for 10 years, and we've gathered dozens, if not hundreds of stories. And what we've been to put them, we turned them into the most beautiful animations. And we've also got people like Mary dressed up, telling the stories to the camera. And I think, Mary, you had fun, didn't you, doing it? I think a lot of the storytellers had fun telling those stories. And they've been shown on television. But we've got new ones this year to roll out. And of course, there'll be workshops and readings for children and adults as well. So, yeah. Right. But Mary, are you one of them who is up for a prize or in the category of, of <laughs> authors for Saturday nights? Oh, I really don't know. <laughs> I'm not, I don't think so. Really? Well, I mean, you just have to, I guess you just have to stick around. So apart from storytelling, you're definitely going to have to be glued to see what's happening. You know, that yes. is, um, for Mary, that's a pertinent question to ask Mary, because one of the things we are going to do this year, which we couldn't do during the festival, is we're actually going to be launching a, a prize for um, the best writer of children's books, which is something we hadn't been able to do before, but we're going to be launching that this year. So it might well be a question that Mary can answer in the future. Yes. All right, Mary, I think I'll have to check back in with you Saturday night and see how it goes. Yeah. Sure thing, sure All right, thing. Uh, Marina, final words before we wrap. Tell people how, how they can uh, be a part of the events, you know, Friday evening until Sunday evening, or where they can get information, all of that. Okay, our website, we We've spent a lot of money jazzing up and making our website one of the best around. So there's me boasting, sorry to boast. Yes. But it's really fantastic. Everything you need to know about everything is in there. Um, it's um, bocaslitfest.com. And from the 23rd to the 25th, once we start at 4 o'clock um, on Friday, we will be broadcasting, at, well, narrow casting, because you're broadcasting, we'll be narrow casting on YouTube, Facebook, and of course, on our website, bookastedfest.com. It's free, you don't need to register, just tune in. Join the thousands who'll be listening and looking. Right, all right, ladies, thank you so much for sharing with us this morning. And I'm sure it's gonna be the second virtual edition of the Bookast Lit Fest, but the 11th edition of the Bookast Lit Fest. And I'm sure that it will be jam-packed and exciting. And more importantly, getting people to read. So thank you so much, Marina Solandi Brown and Mary Coffey. Thank you. You're most welcome. All right. We're going to take a break and we'll be back with you shortly.